Yeah, hi Venus, uh, this is Dr. Shrikant from Team MDS Conquer. Now I'm here to discuss few important topics related to or integrated to microbiology given in NEET 2023 as a quick revision. So the first question is oral hairy leukoplakia is caused by which of the following? Okay, the answer is EBV. Okay, it's also commonly seen or it's also most commonly reported with HIV positive homosexual males and most of us are familiar related to EBV is the main causative organism of Kissing's disease because of deep kissing that is nothing but called as glandular fever. The diagnostic tests that are useful for this glandular fever are your monospot test and palbanal test. Okay, so that those are the basic things that you have to make a note. Okay, EBV, EBV apart from this EBV is going to cause kissing disease. Kissing disease is also called as glandular fever and kissing disease the diagnostic features uh, the diagnostic tests for the kissing disease are monospot test as well as palbanal test. The next one first reported by scientist name they are asking first reported by scientist name that is Greenspan okay and make sure in the comment box please do mention what is Greenspan lesion and what is Greenspan syndrome okay you have Greenspan lesion as well as Greenspan syndrome please do mention both of them in the comment box I will answer I will address you okay right it is most commonly seen at oral hairy leukoplakia is most commonly seen at lateral borders of tongue and preferably it is going to be bilateral okay so coming to the histology the histology is mainly focusing on epithelial hyperplasia with acanthosis and hyperkeratosis so these are the important lines that you have to make a note related to the histology the next question is coposis sarcoma of course you know this is most commonly associated with hiv positive individual okay right so it is basically caused by which virus okay the question is that is the answer is human herpes type 8 very frequently asked question okay human herpes type 8 now few points related to hairy black tongue or black hairy tongue okay it's also called as hairy tongue so these are the other names that you have to make a note okay so normally you have different types of papillae that are present on the tongue normally uh, if you just uh, check out this filiform papillae the filiform papillae are uh, approximately one millimeter in length but in the case of this hairy black tongue okay you will have hypertrophy of these filiform papillae and their length will be more than 15 millimeters and this black hairy tongue is most commonly associated in males as well as in hiv positive individuals the treatment is you need to just brush them properly uh, by adding 40 percent is urea okay right so the next question is moon's molars also called as mulberry molars Okay, moon's molars also called as mulberry molars or foreigner's molars are commonly seen in which of the following infection? The answer is congenital syphilis. Syphilis. Okay. And syphilis we have already discussed in the quick revision that syphilis is basically divided into primary syphilis, secondary syphilis, tertiary syphilis and congenital syphilis. So these are most commonly seen in your congenital syphilis. And please do answer what is Hutchinson triad. Okay. Here, here you have Hutchinson teeth right so please do answer me what is Hutchinson triad okay in the comment box as well as Hutchinson pupil what is Hutchinson pupil please do comment me in the comment box okay so uh, the next important thing is you can see this occlusal modifications okay the occlusal one third is mainly modified and you can see in the diagram the occlusal one third modifications so coming to the uh, congenital syphilis so in congenital syphilis you will have modification of both anterior teeth as well as posterior teeth posterior yes we are already done they are molars nothing but called as mulberry molars on moon shaped molars where occlusal one third is being affected so coming to the anterior teeth anterior teeth are basically called as hutchinson teeth okay they are regularly screwdriver shaped incisors will be seen with an epical notch okay so if you just uh, check out this morphology of the uh, anterior teeth the mesial and the distal surfaces of the crown they are going to taper and converge towards the incisal edge rather than 
towards the cervical margin with an apical notch. So you are going to have an apical notch like this on the incisal edge, you are going to have an apical notch. And this is basically due to absence of central tubercle or calcification center. So among the four, four uh, incisors, okay. So regularly maxillary lateral is going to be normal, okay. Your maxillary central, mandibular central and mandibular lateral are affected. So they can ask you a question, which of the following uh, incisor uh, will be normal or will be unaffected? Your answer should be maxillary lateral is mostly unaffected in most of the situations according to the reference of Schaffer's. Okay. The reason why this notch will be seen is basically due to absence of central tubercle or calcification center. So similarly with this, uh, uh, with this I want you to uh, add a note. What is Turner, Turner's hypoplasia, Turner's teeth. Okay, Turner's hypoplasia, Turner's teeth is basically trauma or infection to that of the deciduous teeth affecting the underlying permanent dentition. Okay, so you will have hypoplasia, you will have hypoplasia only a, a single teeth. So in the case based question, whenever you have an abnormality, only a single teeth is associated, then you can go for the answer as Turner's hypoplasia or Turner's teeth. Okay, similarly, you something have Turner's syndrome. Okay, can you tell me what is uh, the chromosomal notification that is uh, uh, that is given for Turner's syndrome in the comment box? Okay, so what is Turner's syndrome and what uh, tell me how many chromosomes are there? Okay, and what is the uh, chromosomal notification? I mean, uh, how, how it is going to get represented? Chromosomally, how you are going to represent Turner's syndrome? Please do drop me in the uh, Notification. Similarly, uh, I want you to add a note about uh, Hutchinson triad. So what is Hutchinson triad? So Hutchinson triad is most commonly seen in the case of congenital syphilis. And please do mention in the comment box what is Hutchinson triad. And similarly, I want you to add a note about Hutchinson pupil. Where you see Hutchinson pupil and what is Hutchinson pupil, please do add it. Okay. Hutchinson's sun teeth and Hutchinson triad are seen in the case of congenital syphilis. I hope you are very, very clear about that. Next, coming to the question number three. Okay, the question number three is about uh, uh, gray pseudo membrane, okay, or uh, gray to green color pseudo membrane, which is very, very difficult to remove. Okay, so gray, gray pseudo membrane, or gray to green color pseudo membrane, which is very, very difficult to remove. The answer is CD. That is coronary bacterium diphtheria, okay, is the diagnosis where you will have a gray color pseudo membrane. So, particularly in these patients, the coronary uh, diphtheria patients are going to uh, have an emergency situation that is basically due to due to asphyxia, okay, that is basically due to thick gray pseudo membrane will be formed on the respiratory system which make them to suffocate and they require an emergency treatment of air opening. Okay. So that is very, very important uh, about uh, the diphtheria patient. Okay. And where do you see this is again a question for you. Where do you see this grayish pseudo membrane most commonly in the diphtheria patients in the tonsils. Okay. In the tonsils you can see. So in the description part, they are going to tell you in the tonsils, there is a grayish pseudo membrane, which is very, very difficult to remove or resistance to remove or painful during the removal. Okay. Your answer should be diphtheria. Okay, so similarly, as we are talking grayish pseudo membrane, I'll just add a note about grayish gray baby syndrome. Okay, gray baby syndrome. Where do you see this gray baby syndrome whenever there is abnormal usage of chloramphenicol? Okay, so this is basically seen in the case of you can see in the diagram based. Okay, so this is basically a gray baby syndrome. Okay, now the gray baby syndrome is going to have abnormal distinction and hydrodynamic collapse okay so you'll have hydrodynamic changes in the individual okay the baby appears gray in color okay similarly there are other important aspects that you have to know about diphtheria this test was uh, the diagram based question of test was given in diphtheria very simple the coronary bacterium diphtheria short form is cd how your cds long back we used to cd we used to use cd drives right so how they look like they look like this this is how the CD are going to look like. Okay. Whenever you have a diagram like this, your answer should be CD. Okay. What test this is? You can see here, it is looking like K and this is looking like L. Okay. So this is Elix gel precipitation test. Okay. Elix gel precipitation test. Okay. I, I hope you can easily remember this. This is looking like L and this is looking like K. Okay. This is Elix. Okay test and this test is basically useful for the confirmation of CD. Okay. So the other important stains that are useful for this are uh, they can ask you a diagram based question like this. Okay. Diagram based question like this with bacilli and 
with the polar bodies on, on both the ends okay so this is called as metachromatic granules with polar bodies these are basically seen in the case of albert stain or nisser's stain okay that is useful for the diagnosis of cd again cd diagnosis will be there so the serum that is useful for the diagnosis of cd is lofer serum slope okay right so they can ask you the uh, the bacteria was grown on this particular serum or the bacteria stained on this particular stain which is difficult to remove painful to remove grayish pseudo membrane so such a questions they can ask in the case of uh, case based questions okay uh, and similarly in the last few years last year uh, last but one year so there is a question again bull's neck okay this is due to adenitis okay you can see bull's neck in the case of diphtheria and the most common cause of death in diphtheria is due to the circulatory failure okay right i hope you are very very clear so the points are very very clear okay so so please do mention uh, in the comment box uh, that which topic you really want to understand so that we will be taking those things as a priority and we'll be preparing some short quick videos so that's going to help you in the preparation phase and make sure the questions two or three questions which i have asked please do mention them in the comment box and i'm going to respond to you and address you the right answers for now signing off dr Srikanth from team mds conquer bye bye take care